What if one video could teach beginner editors everything they actually need to know? Something so complete and powerful that you wouldn't have to search all over YouTube for answers. Something that works for everyone, no matter what editing software you use, whether it's CapCut, DaVinci Resolve, or even After Effects. After months of thinking, while making my other videos, I finally put the puzzle together and built this video like Frankenstein creating his creature. What you're about to see might be the most complete editing tutorial you've ever watched and I made sure every second of this video has the value you deserve. When you enter the world of editing, you're given the power to create your imagination. Without saying a single word, with just a few static images placed together, what can you tell? Where should the cuts happen? When should the scene change? If you think about it mathematically, give someone just three shots, and depending on how you arrange them, you can create multiple different stories, different meanings, different emotions, so for us editors, it's important to learn how to become a storyteller. But where do we even start? What tools do we really need in editing? Can we add emotion without complex effects? Well, yes. We have one powerful element that can add emotion and completely change the vibe of our creation. And that element is pacing. What is pacing? If I want to make it simple, I'd say, Pacing is the structure of your edit, and the tools you use like cuts, speed, transitions, and effects are what help you build that structure. Every video has two storytelling lines. One is what's being said in the video, and the other is what the visuals are telling. The visual storytelling always completes and supports the voice part, so we need to understand what's happening on the screen because it helps the brain process the story better. Every video and every editor has their own pacing structure. Sometimes what stays in people's minds isn't the editing style itself, but how the creator crafts the pacing. Just look at movie trailers. That's where I get a lot of inspiration for my intros. Now, one tool editors use a lot in pacing is shock. Shock can appear in different forms, and I'm going to explain a couple of them. The first one is black screen shock. You've probably seen this in movie trailers. The video shows a messy or intense scene synced with music, and suddenly there's a quick black frame, just a few milliseconds. This instantly hooks the brain. It shocks the viewer, grabs attention, and because the brain needs a moment to process what it just saw, it chases the flow of the video to understand what's happening. If I'm given some clips and I want to start editing, this is how I pace it. I find the most exciting or chaotic moment in the footage, the peak of the clip, and I put it at the beginning of the video for a couple of seconds. Then, right before the moment of impact or the big reveal, I cut the clip and add a black screen sync to the rhythm for a few milliseconds. Or, when I want to close an intro after about 30 seconds, I cut the music suddenly and cut the clip, then leave a one second black screen before starting the next part. If you take a look at the intros of my previous videos, you'll see that I use this shock technique most of the time. It keeps the audience curious, and it really helps with retention. As creators, we're always looking for ways to save time without sacrificing quality. Editing especially can eat up hours. You know the pain of scrubbing through footage, adding cuts, and trying to make everything look professional. Wouldn't it be nice if editing could be as simple as just telling someone what you want? Well, what I'm about to show you changes everything. Sparky is the world's first AI video editing agent that works through simple conversation. Instead of wrestling with complex timelines and buttons, you just chat your instructions, and Sparky does the editing for you. Let me show you how it works. Like I'm uploading these prison break footages and typing what I want. For example, generate commentary for this video one to two minutes long. Retain some powerful lines and add proper background music. Commentary should cover over two thirds of the video. Then you'll move to a chat page where it generates the result for you. To save his brother from death row, Structural engineer Michael Schofield commits a crime to get incarcerated alongside him. But this is no ordinary prison. This is Fox River. You can also ask the AI to add or modify any external element you want. For example, I want to add subtitles at the bottom of the screen. Sparky updates your video instantly, and you can tweak it as much as you want. But this is no ordinary prison. This is the infamous Fox River. Unlike traditional tools that need scripts, shot selection, and re-editing, Sparky does it all in one place. It finds your best shots, syncs the music, adds narration, and fulfills all your requirements. Perfect for creators who want to edit faster and more efficiently. 
Sparky is also super affordable. The starter plan is $15 and the plus plan is $35 a month. If you go yearly, you get a 40% discount, bringing the starter plan down to $9 and the plus plan to $21 a month. And if you ever need more, you can grab extra credit packs starting at just $5 and your credits never expire. I've put the link in the description so you can go and give Sparky a try and see how much easier editing can be. The second shock form is contrast shock. Dark to light, calm to chaos, slow motion to fast cuts. Old scene, new scene. These sudden differences instantly wake the viewer up and pull their attention back into the video. And the third shock form is zoom shock. Now this one is very important. While I'm explaining zoom shock, I'm also going to talk about the importance of zooming inside your scene, where to use it, when to use it, and how to do it properly. Because when we talk about zooms, we're basically talking about keyframing, and in some cases, speed ramping as well. By the end of this part, you'll understand exactly how to use all of these together. When we start crafting a scene, the first thing we need to decide is the mood. Is it inspirational, upbeat, or intense? Many editors pick music later, but I always suggest choosing music first because music shapes pacing. It tells you how fast the scene moves, where energy rises and where it drops. So before you edit, play your track and imagine the video in your head. I usually search through upbeat.io and one of my favorites is Alex Bess, who creates cinematic trailer style, intense music and perfect for shock pacing. Now that we've chosen our music, we can finally start crafting the video. So the first step is simple. Drop your footage on the timeline and start cutting on the kicks and beats. Every time the beat hits, you have two choices, cut to another clip or stay on the same clip and add movement. And that's where zoom shot comes in. Zoom into your scene, set a keyframe on scale and position, move a few frames forward, zoom out and set another keyframe. That's it. A keyframe marks a start and end. Your editing software fills everything in between automatically which means you don't have to adjust every frame by hand. But you might look at that and think, that doesn't feel like a shock. And you're right, because using keyframes without easing isn't enough to create impact. They move, but they don't hit. Before we get into easing, let's remember something important. Even simple keyframes still add energy to your edit. A slow zoom in or zoom out creates motion. Panning with keyframes, moving left to right, or the opposite adds flow. You can even create emotion using opacity keyframes. Let me give you an example. Imagine you have four to five clips synced to the beats. If you just cut them on the kicks, it works, but it's not enough. To make it feel alive, you add motion. So if I want to introduce an object or a person, I'll scale down at the start of the clip, then slowly zoom up before the cut. Instantly, it feels like that moment means something. Like we're focusing on a detail with purpose, and when I want to reveal a bigger environment, I do the opposite. I zoom out slowly so the audience feels like the world is expanding. Opacity works the same way. If I keyframe opacity to fade to black at the end of a clip, then fade back in on the next scene. That's a smooth emotional transition, simple but powerful. Now imagine if you could control the speed of your keyframes. That's what keyframe easing is. And this is where your editing starts to actually hit. I'm going to show you three forms of easing and how to use them so you can apply them in any editing software you want. It's very simple. Once you get it, you get it. We have ease in, ease out, and ease in out. In CapCut, when you open the keyframe curve presets, the names might be a little different, but the names don't really matter. What matters is learning the shape of the curve. Just remember this. Sometimes the graph you see in your editing app looks different from others. We basically have two types, speed graph and value graph. The one in CapCut is a value graph, but Premiere Pro and After Effects have both value and speed graphs. It doesn't really matter which one you're using. We can still apply easing on any graph. Keyframe easing is basically about controlling speed. So let's keep it simple. Ease out starts fast, ends slow. Ease in starts slow, ends fast. Ease in out, slow at the start, fast in the middle, slow again at the end. Even with just these three types, the timing of the speed change can create so many different variations. Now look at the value graph. The top and bottom lines are basically the limits of your motion. Your keyframes sit on this graph and show the value you're changing, like scale going from 50 to 100. To add easing, 
We use the Bezier handles attached to each keyframe. When you drag these handles, you're controlling how fast the value changes over time. If the curve is soft, the motion feels smoother. But when you pull the handle closer to the top or bottom line, the movement slows down near that keyframe. So for an ease out, if I pull the first handle slightly upward, the motion starts fast. And if I drag the second handle closer to the line, the motion slows down at the end. That's how you create an ease out using the value graph. Now, based on this, you already know how to create ease in. But let's take a look at ease in out as well. Here, the only thing you need to do is pull the busier handles of both keyframes closer to the top and bottom lines. When you do that, the curve turns into an S shape, which means the motion starts slow, gets fast in the middle, and then slows down at the end. Now the question is, when should we actually use any of these curves while easing? There's no exact right answer for this, but we can look at something real, like Mr. Beast's videos, and see what the editor actually does. Now let's take a look at this video and see what they actually did. See, let's play it again. This is the exact graph they used for an ease in. It starts very slow and then suddenly gets fast at the end. You can even see the shape in the speed graph. This type of ease in is used when a scene changes suddenly or when you're doing a match cut transition, which is exactly what they did here. Now, another form of zoom shock that the editor used in a different intro. Let's watch it together. Got it? Let's play it again. This one is ease out. It starts fast and ends slowly. We normally use this when we want to zoom into something that grabs attention, not for scene changes or match cuts. That's exactly why they used ease out here. So now we understand why zoom shock matters and why using the right keyframe easing is important. But what else can we do with zoom shock? You've probably heard of speed ramping. I'm gonna make another video about it later because it's a big topic, but let me just show you what it is. Speed ramping is when you change the speed of the actual video. Normally, clips play at 100%, the same speed they were recorded. If we slow it down or make it faster, now we're stepping into speed ramping. Just like value keyframing, speed can also be keyframed and eased in almost every editing software. Mr. Beast's editors use speed ramping a lot. And you also see it in those car edits or anime reels on Instagram that sync perfectly with the music. While the world of editing has no real ending, learning the basics is very important. Because with AI growing and digital platforms expanding, this is a golden age for us editors. A time where we can create faster, create more, and actually stand out. But only if we understand the structure of an edit and use the right strategies. So now tell me, knowing these things I shared with you in this video, if you had to craft your video from scratch, what would it look like?